Third video today. Wow, I'm inspired. Actually, what, kind of interesting thing is my mind pal, I did really awesome on memory, attention, and focus today, which uh, that's probably why I'm inspired to actually do some videos today. That's awesome. And on that note, the reason why I haven't done a lot of uh, uh, micro tick tutorial videos lately is one, um, I have been working a lot with router OS 7, and I'm not encouraging you to switch over because there are some shortcomings and some bugs, but for the most part, in my opinion, um, the simpler OSPF-based networks are working perfectly fine running router OS 7. I have worked with some networks that are all router OS 7, and knock on wood, they've been extremely reliable, okay? But that's very, very simple OSPF, just OSPF-based networks, okay? Um, there is some funny stuff with BGP on it and MPLS, oof, and BFD doesn't really exist anymore at the moment. But anyway, I digress. Um, one of the reasons why I haven't done a lot of uh, Microtech tutorials is because the network Berg is 20 times better at teaching this stuff. And he is top shelf. I mean, like, dude, if I was, say, a bottle of, like, you know, like $60 Glenlivet, um, network Berg would be that uh, Glenlivet 18 year worth uh, $275 that's behind glass. Yeah. I, I highly encourage you to check out his videos if you want to learn about uh, microtech routing and switching, but I will have more tutorials coming. But I digress. One question which I've seen recently is how to integrate router OS 7 with uh, router OS 6. And it's really not that bad. Um, so I've got a router OS 6 router here on the left, and I've got a router OS 7 uh, on the right. Now there's a lot more options in OSPF now. But I just want to show you the basics, the basic fundamentals of getting this working. Okay, so first things first, we need to create an inst instance. We'll just call it OSP in uh, instance. Now here, we don't, just like with any sites, if you watch my OSPF tutorial, your downstream sites don't need to default originate. We're going to click on redistribute here. Now, see, check this out. Let's do a little comparison here. See all this stuff here? They just laid it out differently. We want to distribute connected and static. See? All right. There's a lot of cool options in here, but you don't need a lot of them, okay? Um, so we'll just hit apply. Um, router ID. Now, there's two ways to do this. Um, you can go and do it. Um, you can get the router ID from in here. There's a little spot for it. I think there's another spot under the OSPF tab. I haven't bothered doing it that way, so I'm not going to show you anyway. So I'm just going to take my router ID and just punch it in. Okay, simple as that. All right, our instance has been created. I've got a sore on the end of my tongue, by the way, again, so I, my speech is a little funny. Let's create our interface templates now. Um, so first of all, uh, we're only doing one here, uh, ETH1. Okay, so simple. We don't have an area yet. Interesting. Usually the microtech catches that. Let's create our area. There we go. Interface template. First, let's create our uh, one for loopback. And this is a passive, so there's the one for OSP or for the loopback. Now let's create our interface for the uh, router to router interconnect. Okay, we want that to be point to point. Cool. All right. Oh, sorry. Back that up a second. Oops. Here, look. This is where we also put in our subnets. Yeah. You guys were thinking, something's not right there, weren't you? Well, it wasn't. All right. And I'm four minutes in, so I don't want to re-record this. I'm just going to leave it in. Okay, so let's put in the network for the loopback. There we go, like so. Now let's put in the network for the point-to-point. -point. Just like we did before. Now what you're seeing here... It's basically the networks section, okay? Um, now, you'll notice that things handle a little bit differently here because it's combining the interfaces as well. Now, watch this. Cost 10, priority 1. If you want to make that match, go for it. Probably smart. There we go. Somebody will correct me on this, I'm sure. Go for it. And if you're going to correct me, please do it in the comments so that everybody can see it, okay? So now we can see our neighbors if it comes up. Go over here. All right, and looks like that's up. Let's 
make sure that our IP space is correct. Yep. All right, so we've got our instance. We've got our interface templates. And now for our interfaces. And I should make sure that I've got the IP addresses correct here. Yeah, it's right there. Firewalls on here. Ah, we're not seeing the second interface here. There it is right there. Let's double check, make sure that it's, uh, that that is in there. Cool, I can pick it. Yeah, that's that right there. Oh, here we go. That is set for point to point. Yeah, P2P. We're just not seeing that second interface, are we? Yeah, it should come up, right? Oh, you want to see something? I forgot. Check this out. This is a good little troubleshooting point for you. You notice that the OSPF's not coming up, right? That's why it's not in the bridge, or it's not supposed to be in the bridge. So there we go. Remove that. Oh, it's up now. <gasps> cool. So now we should see the neighbors. We see the. There we go. We've got our dynamically added routes right here. It's literally just that simple. Plus, you just got a couple of troubleshooting points. Yay. Cool, eh? We can do that one more time now. I'm going to simplify this, okay? One more time, because this is only like a seven-minute video so far. I should probably do this again, because I did actually stumble a little bit, and I want to do this flawlessly, okay? All right, so here we are. So first, our instance, okay? So if we look at the instances here, watch out how, the, watch out how this sets up. There's your loop back. We don't want default originate, but we want connected and static like over here, right? We're gonna go here and create our area because by default it doesn't. Now we can create our interface templates. First one, OS, or loop back. Enter it, right? Passive, because that's the passive interface. I'm gonna show you that one again. It's basically combining the interfaces tab and the networks tab, right? So if you look here, see, it's not really that different. It's just combining, like it's collating different tabs into, the, into each other, right? Okay, so that one's done. Now we're gonna create our second one. And of course, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So yes, in router OS 7, there's more proficient ways to do this, I'm sure. We're going to set this for point to point. We're going to set our costs the same. And apply. Now we see that both these guys are up dynamically. We see that our neighbors are up. And now we should see the routes populate down here. And they do. It's really that simple. There you go. Router OS 7, or sorry, Router OS um, uh, 7 integrated with Router OS 6 OSPF. Not really that hard. Not really that hard. Done. So don't worry. Now, as far as Router OS 7 is concerned, uh, I'll give you my opinion on it right now, is that um, it still has tons of bugs with it. Um, am I running networks with it? I've got a few clients that are running Router OS 7 across their whole networks with zero problems. They're running very reliably, very stably, knock on wood, with 
very little issue, okay? Um, one thing which I have noticed is that they have uh, borked a few things, like MPLS is a little wonky, VPLS, um, if you're running that, by the way. Um, there was uh, some issues with the route filtering. Route filtering is just, ugh, it's a pain in the ass because you've got to script it now. And those of you that are proficient in scripting or who have already done it all in router OS 7, good for you. But uh, I'm telling you right now that I don't like the fact that you have to script to do route filtering for BGP. That is a pain in the ass. It's annoying, okay? Um, that's really all I've got to say about it. Should you switch to router OS 7? No, not yet. In fact, if most of your gear is router OS 6, stop running long term. Start using stable router OS 6. Um, if you need equipment, don't be fearful to buy equipment that is running router OS 7 native that you can't run router OS 6 on, especially the ARM64 stuff. Um, it integrates quite nicely, as you can see. So there you go, guys. Um, OSPF from router OS 6 to router OS 7. And the reason why I made this video is that somebody asked the question. And so I'm like, well, shit. And that was on the Discord. I was on the Wisp Talk uh, Discord group, and somebody was asking about that. I'm like, well, dude, I'll throw a video together for you and demonstrate it. It's not that bad. So well, there you go, guys. Anyway, I hope you liked that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to help feed me and help uh, sponsor the channel, join the Patreon. I know I haven't released a ton lately, but uh, hey, whatever. And by the way, I am releasing stuff. It's just, dude, it's February. I am definitely suffering seasonal depression. Ugh. I'm bored, listless, poorly motivated. And I don't mean poorly motivated because I'm not grateful about all the people who help me and hire me. I mean, like, poorly motivated as in I don't feel challenged. Therefore, my motivation has gone in the toilet, and I do apologize for that. Now, the other thing as well that I should mention is um, I've kind of let up on doing MicroTik tutorials because the network bird does it so much better, and he is far more intelligent than me, trust me. And uh, I would prefer... I like focusing on hardware stuff and quirky, weird things that you guys have questions about. Like, uh, for example, um, this is a T1 DSU card. Cool. Well, I've got Cisco tutorials coming, by the way. But, um, yeah, um, I'm focusing on the stuff that I, I'm really in enjoying working with. And, um, yeah, um, Network Berg is – he's rocking along with some really wicked-ass uh, tutorial videos. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and we shall catch you later, guys.